Pouring up the champagne. Pop. It's my house. Come on. Turn it up. Uh. Hear a knock on the door and the night begins. Hey folks, welcome back to Welcome to My World. It's Dominique back here with you. And today we're going to be talking about spoon theory and being a spoonie. A lot of my readers and friends and just random people that I end up talking to um, ask me what I mean when I say that I am a Spoonie or when I reference one of my clients or my friends or somebody in my life who is a quote unquote Spoonie. And we're going to try to keep this one short and sweet, uh, but let's let's talk about what that means. Is that a catch-all phrase? Is it some sort of a a way of branding um branding your martyrdom <laughs> that's something i think that people think uh that it's a way of branding branding your martyrdom and and saying look at me well let's try to disprove that one first and foremost uh while while we get started here so obviously it's not uh a way of branding your martyrdom it is a way of pointing out, okay, in a positive, as positive a way as possible, that somebody is, while they may appear healthy and well and functional, that they're not, that they have some challenges. Now, is it worth pointing out that somebody in a wheelchair is a spoonie? Not necessarily. Is it worth pointing out that somebody on crutches or in a cast is uh, is a spoonie. Not necessarily. So where the term comes in really handy is for those of us who look quote unquote healthy. Okay. It's, it's a creative sort of explanation of just, you know, without getting into diagnoses and all of that sort of stuff uh, that can kind of make people go, you know, I don't understand that. I can't relate to that. Uh, It's a way of helping healthy people relate to what your situation is without getting off into the weeds. And essentially, the spoon theory is that uh, if you start the day, we all start the day, for instance, with spoons in our hands. And that, that set of spoons represents our energy, represents our physical and mental ability and emotional ability to handle various situations that may arise throughout the day, whether it be getting ready, whether it be taking a bath or a shower, whether it be working out, whether it be, you know, driving to work, whether it be making something to eat or eating it, it's, it's all going to take energy, which in this case, uh, relates to spoons. We we call each sort of energetic um, output a, a spoon, okay? So, and, and the thing to remember about our spoons is that whether you're healthy or not as healthy, uh, whether you're a spoonie or not, once you give away a spoon, you can't take that spoon back. You cannot gain a spoon. You cannot take a spoon back. The spoons are finite, folks. That's the thing to remember. Okay. So uh, for, for spoonies, spoons are completely finite. We don't start off the day with an unlimited amount of spoons, whereas a healthy person might start off the day with a an unlimited or a nigh unlimited supply of spoons. A spoonie starts the day off with, let's say, 15 spoons, okay? And you might think, whoa, 15 spoons, I'm rich. I, I could do anything with 15 spoons, but let's let's revisit that, okay? Let's revisit that. So if a spoon equates to a unit of energy spent, let's think about what tasks we might do throughout the day to expend energy, Now, for Spoonies, there are going to inevitably be more tasks that need to be completed. So let's keep that in mind, too. There are going to be extra steps throughout the day, like taking medication, like maybe doing physical therapy stretching or physical therapy 
a workout of some sort that helps to uh, curb your pain. And that's obviously going to cost you spoons, aka energy, right? So uh, things like this are a must for spoonies. Uh, perhaps we may, some of us may have to stop several times throughout the day to take medications, supplements, you know, what have you. I know I take a lot of supplements and quite a few medications as well that relate to my autoimmune uh, illnesses and that help me to be in slightly better shape than I otherwise would be without said medications and without said um, supplements. A, a lot of the medications I take, like I said, are um, things that help to curb my, my autoimmune response to things like uh, environmental factors and, and uh, you know, weather factors and things like that. I don't want to end up with a horrible migraine headache because I didn't take all of my immuno uh, therapy meds and all of my allergy meds and all of these fun types of, of things throughout the day. Um, I don't want to end up going out for a walk or when I'm feeling awesome, a run, and then, you know, saying, oh my gosh, I forgot to take those immunotherapy meds and here I am having a horrible asthma attack out in the middle of nowhere, right? And most people wouldn't have to think about that kind of thing. Also, just in relation to spoons themselves, when we are running low on quote unquote spoons as spoonies, uh, we, there are things we can't do. It's not a matter, again, of being a martyr. It's not a matter of just not wanting to do something and using your illness as an excuse. It's not any of those things. It's a matter of uh, the fact that we have to look at life in a more long-term way. We have to take a more long-term view of life. We have to not just think about what do I want to do, eat, um, ex how do I want to exercise right now? Uh, what do I want to do as far as work right now? Uh, do, can I work those extra three or four hours? Can I, can I do that overtime shift right now in the moment? No. We have to think, uh, okay, how is doing this overtime shift going to impact me for the next week? What kinds of things do I have coming up for the next five or six days that might require my energy uh, where I need to save up some energy or kind of manufacture some spoons uh, to make sure that I'm able to complete that task. So we do, we have to look at things in a more long-term way. We have to look at what does the do the next couple of days have in store for me? What does the next week, the next month have in store for me? When we travel, we really have to be mindful of, you know, do I need any prescription refills? Do, am I going to go somewhere where my, um, where my immune system is going to go completely haywire? For instance, uh, a couple of times recently I've traveled to areas that have been affected by forest fire. And one of the really serious autoimmune issues I have centers around my breathing and my lungs. And so I really had to be very mindful of making sure I took all of my preventative gear with nebulizer, various inhalers, um, you know, preventative meds, treatment meds, supplements, making sure that I had all of that available to me at a moment's notice. And obviously traveling with lots of medical gear and supplements and medications is not fun. It's not easy, um, but you have to do it. You have to plan, for instance, to have a business class or first class seat on a plane. And we don't always have the means to do that, but uh, sitting in a regular coach seat could even sitting in a first class seat, to be totally honest, can send us into a tailspin if we have back issues, neck issues, something like that. Whereas a normal person who just has a back issue once in a while, you know, it'll it might flare up, but it'll be fine in a couple of hours. With us, we could be on our ass for a week, right? We could be on flat on our back in bed for days, and we'll miss out on work. We'll miss out on fun. We'll miss out on money. It's not a good situation. And so any number of things can send us into flare-ups. Uh, you might be thinking, oh, well, you know, you're just, those, those people are hypochondriacs. You're a hypochondriac. Well, 
no, we're not. Um, in fact, we all have honest to goodness diagnosable illnesses. Many of us have clusters of illnesses and illnesses that can oftentimes cause us various injuries and various um, incredibly painful and unpleasant flare ups. Um, and, you know, again, they're all diagnosable. We, many of us, most of us, I would say, go to specialists, um, go to teaching hospitals, these sorts of things. So no, we're not, you know, we're not hypochondriacs. No, we're not making things up. It's, it's all diagnosable stuff. It's all real stuff. And, you know, nobody has fun living life that way. So the idea that somebody would make something like that up is, is a little bit ludicrous. Uh, you know, I know for, for my own part, I don't want extra attention. I don't want extra awe or poor you. I, I don't want any of that. I really don't. I would a- appreciate just being able to live my life and, you know, for people to understand, but none of that kind of, oh my gosh, poor you, life must be so hard type stuff. No, I, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm really just looking for some understanding. And, you know, if I have to travel with you or if I have to reschedule um, something that we've had planned, that's all I'm looking for is some basic understanding. That's a, that's about it. You know, not, not going to be asking you to come live my life for me or something like that. I quite like my life. I'm fine living it on my own. Um, so if that's, I, I know that's a question that I, I'm asked oftentimes as a writer, you know, are you sure you have actual medical, uh, issues or are, are Spoonies sure that they, yes, we're sure. Many of us have things like, uh, cancer, like I said, many of us have different autoimmune disorders diagnosed folks, diagnosed autoimmune disorders that actual specialists have diagnosed us with. Um, you know, many of us have other chronic health issues such as Lyme disease, uh, lupus, fibromyalgia. You know, these are things that while, while they can cause absolutely excruciating pain, loss of energy, exhaustion, uh, flare-ups, injuries, and, you know, the need for surgeries and things like that. They're not always visible to the naked eye. They're not always visible to somebody else who might encounter one of us, right? So if if we have something like an endometriosis, a fibromyalgia, um, a lupus, a Lyme disease, it's not going to be super obvious to someone else. And, you know, so so what we're asking for is just a modicum of understanding and, and respect and hopefully that sort of healthy people will have their their eyes and their minds opened to uh, what we go through just to even to a small extent Um, and and it's a pretty simple ask it's a pretty simple ask just basic empathy and understanding is what we're asking for and in fact if you if we don't get it that's fine we we're still living our lives and doing our doing our thing um now, what tasks might require spoons, right? We talked a little bit about tasks that might require spoons, which, if you remember, is akin to a unit of energy spent. So there's this really great uh, infographic. I am not sure from whence, <laughs> from whence this thing came. I don't know who put it together, who made it, but it is a really good, concise, clear infographic, and I just, I quite like it. Um, and I may share it on social media when I share this this post, uh, this podcast post. So there's this really clear sort of breakdown. Uh, and this person submits that, let's say we all, uh, Spoonies, all have 12 spoons per day to spend. And it, it says, knowing that, you know, how would you spend those spoons? And uh, I like that this person... Right off the bat, they have labeled tasks that are one spoon, tasks that are two spoons, tasks that are three spoons, and tasks that would cost you four spoons to perform. And then also, right off the bat, they say, take away one spoon right right away if you didn't sleep well last night or forgot to take your meds or skipped a meal. 
take away four spoons if you have a cold. And I would say take away four spoons if you have the flu, right? Okay, so that that's a lot of spoons right there. So let's say, you know, let's pretend you're a spoony and let's give you the benefit of, you know, not having a cold or the flu because you do have a compromised immune system. So you don't have a cold or, or flu or anything like that. You're not in a huge flare up. You're not in a huge flare up. But you didn't sleep particularly well last night because you were in pain. You maybe had to go to the washroom a few times during the night. Uh, you just didn't sleep well. So that's one spoon taken away. So your 12 spoons turn now into 11 spoons. And that's all you've got for the day to complete all of your tasks. Now, you might already be thinking, hey, she is definitely going to tell me that I have more than 12 spoons to uh, spend throughout the day. Well, yes, I am. That's absolutely true. So what are you going to have to do throughout the day? You're going to have to get out of bed, which is going to be one spoon. That's, that's one spoon, just getting out of bed. Yes, it is. Okay, don't argue with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm having an imaginary argument with people going, no, that doesn't cost a spoon. But truly, if you are somebody with chronic illness, it does. It costs a spoon. I promise you it does. So getting out of bed is one spoon. Then bathing, taking a shower, whatever, uh, is another spoon. Okay. Uh, and then throw in another spoon right there because you probably had to do extra things to take care of yourself. Maybe you have a skin issue. Maybe you had to wash your hair. Maybe, you know, your back or your injury of, of whatever flavor of the day that might be is acting up. So let's, let's call the bathing two spoons. So already you've used three spoons and you're just getting out of the shower or the bath. Now you've got to get dressed. That's going to be another spoon. You're going to have to take your pills. That's going to be another spoon, okay? Uh, so you've used up five of your 12 spoons already. So do you want to surf the internet, read, study, watch TV? That'll cost you another spoon no matter what you do. Or do you just want to go on right away and do your hair and makeup? That'll be at least two spoons. So right now you've used seven spoons, now you've got to make and eat a meal. Well, you don't necessarily have to make it. You can stop at Starbucks or what have you on your way to work or on your way to start your day. So let's call that just another spoon. So now you have four spoons left for the rest of the day, okay? For the rest of the day. So you can either socialize, do some housework, um, go to school or work, probably pretty important, uh, go shopping, go to the doctor or exercise or go somewhere, drive somewhere else. And driving to or from anywhere, traveling to or from anywhere that you're going to go is going to cost you a spoon. So let's say you have to travel to and from wherever you're going. That's nine spoons already. Then you have to go through your work day or possibly go to the doctor or go shopping or do housework. That's another four spoons. You've used at least 13 out of your 12 spoons. Do you feel me right now? So every single task is, it, you have to make a big decision about what things are important to you. I, I find myself oftentimes having to cancel and reschedule uh, social plans. I have to oftentimes cancel and reschedule social plans. Uh, if I don't feel well enough to drive or travel, obviously that's another reschedule of plans right there. Um, if I want to get some of my other paying jobs done and, and get some of the tasks from those jobs attended to, that's another couple of spoons. So I definitely cannot spend time on the phone or socializing or, you know, going out with friends. Um, it's, it's really uh, a very budgeted lifestyle, right? Your, your time, your energy is budgeted to the max. Even if you're not as busy as I am, your, your time and energy is budgeted to the max. Now, let's say you've got a pet that needs to be cared for. Maybe 
your pet or pets need medicine, um, need food, need to be walked or taken outside, the litter boxes need to be cleaned, more spoons. Let's say that you have a child that needs to be cared for or an elderly relative that needs to be cared for. Many more spoons, many, many, many more spoons. So you can imagine, you can imagine how uh, difficult it can be to budget our time, right? Uh, and for those of you who are unaware, the author of Spoon Theory is Christine Miserando, and she, in fact, was sitting down uh, while she was in college at a restaurant with a friend, and the friend was asking her what it was like to live, I believe she has lupus, so what it was like to live with lupus, and what she had said was, okay, um, here, here's a bunch of spoons. And her friend was like, oh, well, what the hell are you talking about? What's, where are you going with this? Well, she gave her friend all of these spoons and then she took several away and she was, she said, here, this is, this is what you've got to get you through the day. This is the amount of energy that you have to attend to things throughout the day. Um, well, well, now what would you do throughout the day? And the friend started listing things like, well, I'd get out of bed, then I'd wash up, then I'd do my makeup and my hair, and then I would make my breakfast. And, and she was just astonished by how many spoons or units of measure of energy, uh, those various tasks cost and, and how many spoons she went through. So how quickly she went through them, uh, throughout the day and how much you, she had to feel like she needed to budget her energy and her time. And her friend kind of said, well, yeah, exactly. That That is what it's like to live with an autoimmune disorder. That's what it's like to be a spoonie. So this is how Spoon Theory was born. And her website, for those who would like to check it out, is www.butyoudontlooksick.com. <laughs> pretty, pretty easy to remember and pretty obvious and on the nose. I like it. Um, and, and that's just the thing with, with spoonies. Um, we don't always look sick, so it can be difficult to try to explain to people, um, you know, what our lives entail. And also on top of just the spoon slash energy, uh, dynamic, we, we have to live our lives in a certain amount of extreme discomfort to pain, in fact. And, and so not only do we go day to day, you know, with a few aches and pains or a little bit of, of discomfort, we actually live our lives in quite a bit of pain. So, and pain itself can cost you spoons or energy. And so this is something that's important to remember. Um, So no, we're not pretty, pretty princesses or delicate flowers. We're actually probably a lot stronger than many people out there are. And we have a real sense for the value of life. And, um, you know, we, we work really hard to get where we need to go in life. And so that essentially is being a spoonie. You have to be a tough cookie. You have to be a strong, kick-ass person to be able to live life day to day as a spoonie. And, you know, yeah, we have finite energy, but we do a lot more with our energy than many people probably feel able to do. We are strong people. We're incredible people. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm glad to be a Spoonie. I'm not. But uh, I, I'm glad for the lessons that being a Spoonie has taught me. And I'm very glad for the lessons that pain has taught me. Pain is an excellent teacher. It teaches you to be patient. It teaches you to be in the moment. It teaches you to accept things without... Um, any reservations. It, it teaches you to empathize with other people. Okay. And these are really important life lessons that I know I maybe wouldn't have learned had I not been born a spoonie. So 
yeah, there are some really positive lessons that come with it. Um, that's going to do it. That I'm going to wrap up right now. Uh, thank you for listening in. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'm open to answering them. Thank you so much for listening. And if you are with me on that Spoonie train, you're not alone. You're a strong person. You're amazing. Thank you for being you. Cause we've done this before, so you come on in. Make yourself at my home.